Hey everyone, Todd Schutte here with the Bona E-Learning Team. And I'm Dee Liston with the Tech and Training Team. Hey, we've also got a special guest here today, Brian Rathbun, who is our uh, Territory Manager for the Rocky Mountain Region. He was also one of the charter members for our BCCP program and started in his hardwood flooring career over in Germany in their guild system. Um, but we're happy to have him here today, especially with our topic, which is power drive. Uh, we came out with that machine probably around 2014, and it's really changed the way a lot of guys are now approaching their whole sand and finish system. So here's the question to you guys. If I'm a salesman, I'm coming in, I'm saying, hey, I, I'm going to show you a machine that will cut your edging by 80%. And I'm going to show you another machine here that you can teach one of your brand new guys to run it and do most of the sanding in a room in about 15 minutes. Uh, that's how short the learning curve is. And I, I'm going to show you another machine that will replace several of the machines in your whole sand and finish process. Would you be interested in any three of those machines? Uh, I mean, I hope your answer is yes. And the good news is all of those things are available with the power drive. So we think it's been one of those things that, that you know, comes about maybe once in a, a generation of, of floor sanding experience and can really change the way uh, you're sanding, changes the way that you run your crews. Uh, you won't have floors, you know, that, that surface quality that the power drive can create that's just phenomenal if you haven't seen it yet. So we're going to first run a, a question to Brian. Um, you know, Brian, with your personal experience, you know, being a floor contractor and stuff, of the wear and tear that you get sanding and finishing floors, how does running the power drive change this? That's a great question, Todd. You know, I was a contractor and running a business for, um, you know, close to 20 years. Um, you know, the wear and tear on the body uh, adds up, um, you know, it's a uh, hardwood floors for a reason. It's, it's a difficult job and uh, I admire the contractors in the market. that are continuing to do this day in and day out. Um, and the power drive just eliminates that wear and tear on the body. Instead of having to uh, have the technicians or the business owner themselves uh, being bent over an edger for hours on end, that dreaded hallway of it's three feet wide and the flooring's running back and forth. Uh, and you know, you look at it, you're like, man, I'm gonna have to be edging this thing for the next hour and a half, two hours, whatever it is. Um, having that power drive to be able to be in an upright standing position uh, like a normal human being and uh, take that power drive through those areas that are tight or along the walls and, and just getting more erect, uh, that really saves the wear and tear on the back and the knees because a lot of guys out there have to drop to one knee because they're uncomfortable and so you have a lot of pressure points and the power drive eliminates all of those. Yeah, thanks Brian. Um, especially in, in being able to prolong somebody's career, uh, I think that's one of the key points because no matter how good, like you said, you take care of your body, uh, this is just a hard job. And if we can come up with some machines that'll help that, then you know everybody is gonna be better off by being able to prolong their careers. and be healthier and happier while they're doing it. Um, D, how about to, at the training schools? You know, whether a guy's been in this for 40 years or whether he's brand new, you, you guys go over the power drive, kind of show it. What are the reactions when people finally get their chance to step up behind it? Yeah, day one, they're already talking about it. They want to know, are you guys going to be running the power drive? Are we going to be doing wire brushing and all the things you can do with the power drive? So they're talking about it the minute they walk in. And so once we do get out on the panel, and the contractors are able to get behind the machine. Uh, the newer guys, you know, because they've never really ran anything like that, the ease of use for, I mean, just seeing how easy it is for them to run it, you know, they're just thinking, wow, this is great. Some of the veterans that have some experience on, you know, pre-power drive, you know, big machine edging, they're thinking, man, where was this machine at when I first started doing floors? Because they just see how easy it is and what it's able to do and how it minimizes how much edging you have to do. So they're very excited about putting their machine, putting that machine into their van or into their trailer so that they know now they can get this new guy, you know, up and going with the, you know, minimum amount of training. Yeah. How about with the, and then when they jump on the other machines, you know, edger, big machines pulling them around have a little buffer rodeo, compare that all with the, the power drive. 
Yeah, they, they want to go back to the power drive once they get behind and see the difficulty in you know, learning how to run some of the other machines, especially the edger. But when we show them, because we'll typically do a section with the big machine, and then we'll go back to you know, how much edging you have to do after running the big machine, and then with the power drive, they see how little edging you have to do. They're thinking, man, you know, you got to have one of those in your in your uh, in your trailer in your van. Yeah, uh, I mean, I know with with your experience, with the uh, the bit of experience that I've got running machines, it's just it's truly a game changer. Indeed. Um, Brian, next question for you, ex-contractor, you know, business owner, tell us about the uh, efficiency and effectiveness of running the power drive versus traditional sanding equipment and the type of surface you get from that. So the, the power drive, you know, from the, the, the business owner stand uh, point, um, you know, labor shortage in the hardwood floor industry is, uh, it's a difficult uh, one to tackle. Uh, and, I, and I don't foresee that that labor shortage is going to go away anytime. So having a power drive, you take a lot of the guesswork and the finesse and the several years of experience of trying to blend an edger to a big machine and, and clocking the edger and all those nuances that go in with uh, blending those two types of machines. The power drive eliminates all that. When I had the power drive uh, as a contractor, it was, uh, I'm still proud of the fact it was prototype number one. And I had that one machine and, and the guys just loved it because they didn't have to be, you know, focused on what they're doing all the time. Um, and, you know, there's guys that I brought on board that within six or seven months, they were out there in the field with the power drive, um, tackling jobs that I normally wouldn't have sent them out there until they had a couple of years of experience under their belt. Uh, so that's, that's a great asset for a business owner. And it's a funny story. The first power drive, I, you know, I had that one power drive. I had about three guys working for me, and they were always texting me, hey, boss, I need the power drive on Tuesday. I need it on Wednesday. I need it on Thursday. You know, they're always bugging me for that one power drive. I'm like, you know, what's the deal, guys? Why, why can't you just complete a floor? I'm not going to run this power drive all over the city. And I realized that it's because it's so easy to use, the guys were fighting over that single power drive. And so I've seen a lot of business owners invest in the one, and all of a sudden, they start having that chatter like I experienced, and those business owners are investing in their employees and their business by purchasing more power drives. You know, when I started out uh, almost 30 years ago, Todd, we had a different environmental conditions. Um, modern homes, we have LED lighting. Um, we have big open windows to let all that light coming in. So the environmental change, the aspect of uh, the lighting conditions in the house and consumers are more savvy of what they're looking for. So having the power drive on there and being able to get an absolutely perfectly flat floor takes out the guesswork. And also for the business owner, you know, these guys are running hard and by the time Thursday, Friday rolls around, they're, they're starting to get tired. They've, you know, coming up to put a stain or a sealer coat on. So having that power drive for the crews to operate, knowing that the fatigue is taken out, the strain on their body, and they've got a perfectly flat floor to receive that stain or finish, um, it eliminates a lot of the mistakes and the callbacks of having to come back and do the touch up because there's a, a drum mark or a, a large hook from the edge or whatever that the power drive just eliminates all of those. All right, great points, Brian. Thanks for that. And uh, yeah, you just, you can't replicate what you can do with the power drive with traditional equipment. Um, do you know one of the problems in this industry is lack of skilled labor? You know, fewer guys coming into it or fewer new guys coming into it. Although I still think we see quite a few new guys, you know, coming in. But uh, what have you seen and heard from contractors who purchased the power drive about how easy it is to teach their guys? Yeah, with, with a new guy, you know, as I mentioned a little earlier, I mean, you know, training a guy how to run a big machine, you know, can be challenging. Uh, although, you know, as a, a business owner or the lead on the job site, normally they put the new guy on the edger just, you know, just to keep him occupied. Although you can do a lot of damage with the edger too. But, you know, when it comes to the big machine, I mean, it's fairly easy to run, but there's a lot of damage you can do with a big sanding machine. So, 
um, you know, the, the training from a training aspect, you know, to get a guy to actually be able to sand the floor and put him on a power drive and, and, and know that you can do it with that machine, um, you know, it's been a game changer. Um, you know, guys love it. You know, everybody wants one. Even if they have one of those other similar type machines, you know, they want to trade those machines in just to get a power drive because of its, you know, dual purpose of being able to run it like a big machine where it's going to grind the floor and to be able to use it as a buffer. Yeah. Um, just, just yesterday, actually, on the, I think it was on the hardwood floor installation group on Facebook, some guy posted, you know, what, what are your, what's your process for how long you let your new guy go on the edger, you know, when you're teaching him? How, how do you guys teach a new guy? And that's the bad thing, right, is they teach the guy on the machine that they can probably do the most damage with, right? But they, why do they do that? Because it hurts their back. Yes. Right? So if, if we can take the power drive now and show you guys how you can reduce your edging 50 to 80 percent, I mean, it just makes sense that, yeah, I'd want one of those because now I can have my new guy run that. You could have him sand most of the room. Right. Right? And not do any damage, do a great professional job, and nobody's back is hurting at the end of the day. Yeah, and that's true. And the thing is, you know, and, and guys are using the power drives in different ways. I mean, some guys will come in and make a first cut with a big machine, and then they'll get into, you know, finalizing things with the power drive. You know, if it's a smaller room, some guys will just take the power drive up on a landing or a smaller room and just do the whole job with that. So. The versatility of that machine and being able to sand a complete job and the learning curve being minimal, you know, is really key to, especially if you have a new guy out on the job site. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Brian, here's your next question. So you, when you and I were talking, you had made a statement about, you know, fatigue and how that, you know, kind of builds up during the week. And then kind of when and why mistakes are made when you're a contractor running jobs throughout the week and what that costs you then at the end of the week. So can you make some more comments about that? Again, it's, uh, it's taking that fatigue away from the guys, Todd. Um, you know, I started tracking it. My guys were averaging about 14 to 16 hours per week edging. That's, you know, basically two full days of being bent over. Um, and that time with the power drive went down to about four hours a week. Uh, the guys loved it. And, you know, instead of say they get the floor sanded on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, they're a larger project and they're getting ready to stain on on Thursday. Um, you know, now they're thinking, man, I've, I've been bent over edging all week and now I've got to be crawling around on my floor on my hands and knees buffing in the stain. And I know we have other videos about that technique to to buff on the stain. But, you know, guys are like, man, I got to rag on, rag off. They're just tired. And, and again, those were the mistakes that are made. And as a business owner, I calculated that just taking myself out of the field, going to that homeowner's house, ringing their doorbell, going in, looking at that error that may have been left behind, that's costing the company a couple hundred dollars for every one of those little visits for that touch up. Having that power drive there, that takes me out from having to go do and look over that floor of coming by to drop off a bone and mop kit and collect a check and move on to the next job site. The efficiency is just incredible. Thanks, Brian. Um, again, we appreciate you being here and, and your input and your experience from both uh, being a contractor, one of our charter BCCP members, and now being on the bonus sales team uh, for a number of years out there with uh, the contractors every day. So. Again, we hope you guys uh, are excited about the power drive. Um, even if you have one, we're hoping that we uh, can show you some things here today that you might not have known about it. So we're gonna take a quick break. We'll come back and we'll head right into our demonstrations. Thanks. All right, hey everybody, we're back, uh, ready for the demonstration. So we're gonna show a number of things. One is just general operation of the power drive because it's very different. You don't run it like a regular buffer most of the time. Also some important power considerations, uh, just even attaching the plate. We also wanna show you guys how to minimize your edging, um, whether it's along open walls or along your butt ends. We're going to show you why the power drive is the best machine to take filler off the floor if you're full trial filling. Then we'll also show you the wire brush system. So, number of things to show you guys, and Dee's going to start us off. So, let's get going. All right. Thank you, Todd. Thank you. 
So with the power drive, the first thing you want to make sure is you have the right power. What we're going to do is um, we're going to have the power station hooked up. You want to know what motor you have on your power drive. So there is a, a, a sticker on the, on the power drive that tells you whether you're running a 240 motor or a 220. So once you know what motor you have and you have your power station hooked up, you're going to want to dial that in as close to the voltage that you have on this machine on your motor as possible in order to have a, a smooth run. So after you have your power dialed in, then you're going to want to you know, have your drive plate. And the way you want to run the drive plate is depending on what you're trying to do. On this particular demo, we are grinding the floor. So what we have here is we have a coat of finish along with a coat of paint on the floor. And the paint is just to really to show you guys the cut point and how, how it's cutting. So we have our drive plate that doesn't have any kind of interface pads. It's just directly onto the, uh, the drive plate pad in order to give us a more aggressive cut. And so then you have a light, which we're not going to put the light on the machine just during filming. We don't want to create too much light, so, but I wanted you guys to see what the light uh, you know, looks like, just like with the buffer, and it plugs directly into the power drive. And then you have weights. And with the weights, you can determine whether or not if you need to be a little bit more aggressive, then you have an option of putting one or two weights on the machine as well. So once you have everything dialed in, then you're ready to go. Okay, so now we're going to demonstrate attaching the drive plate. And when you attach the drive plate, it's going to be important that you make sure the lever goes down and that it's locked into place. That way it's not on loosely. One other thing, when you put your drive plate on, I know that some contractors like to put their buffer on top of the drive plate and then they'll start the, uh, start the buffer so that it just kind of yanks into place. I wouldn't recommend that because you don't want to do any damage to your um, clutch plate. So we'll put the drive plate on, make sure that it's seated, and then you'll give it a little turn. And once it hits, now you will lower the lever and now that locks it into place. Now that we have that locked into place, we're going to go ahead and tilt our power drive up. And now at this point, I'm going to start the power drive and show you and take a footprint. That way we can see exactly how it's cutting. All righty, so what you'll see here is the footprint as to how it looks like it's cutting. You know, it's cutting more aggressive towards the back end and the feather end is towards the top end. So there's going to be a different couple ways of running it as far as the positioning of the power drive, which I'm going to keep it clocked when I go uh, forward pass and then on my backward pass, I'll clock it different ways. But you'll determine on which way works best for you as you start to get used to the machine. In regards to the handle position, you want to make sure that you do not run the power drive like a buffer. If you run the handle all the way down, although it may run okay, it's probably going to bounce around on you. It should be in the upper position and you'll know if the handle's too far up and you try to start it and it doesn't turn on, it's just because the handle is too far up. There is a, a safety click there that when you lower the handle just slightly, it will be in the upright position but just slightly back and then it'll allow you to start your power drive up. So right now I'll go ahead and start running the power drive a couple passes and we'll see what it does.
Alrighty, so at this point, what you see is that, you know, I made a couple passes, only overlapping about half the width of your power drive. And the speed will kind of depend on, you know, what you're trying to cut off of the floor. As I mentioned, we have finish on the floor along with a coat of paint. So I kind of took my time to make sure we're getting through both the paint and the finish. Again, I wanted to address the handle position. As you can see, with the handle being straight up, it really makes it a lot easier to run this machine as opposed to running a buffer with the handle down and there's really less fatigue because you're in the upright position and it really is just like you know pushing a vacuum around I mean, really simple and if you wanted to lean on it to give you you know not quite like healing the buffer but you are able to lean on the handles to make it more cut more aggressive on either side of, of the back side of the machine so um, you know really like I say easy learning curve when it comes to putting a new contractor on the power drive. Uh, very simple machine, does a great job, definitely keeps the floor a lot flat, more flatter I should say than the big machine, but a very simple machine to run. All right, so now let's talk about uh, the abrasives, um, our abrasive sequence because Really, there's two things that have happened here. One, obviously, the advent of the uh, power drive and everything it can do, but also the change in abrasives that we've seen over the last 10 or 15 years, and how do we work all those together into this new system? So, again, typically on your first cut, you may be using a, a big machine, and we're, we're usually going to do that first cut with Bona Green. So a Bona Green belt, 40 or 50 grit if we can. We'll, out, we'll go down to 36 if we need to. Uh, but we're usually starting with green. You could also do it with the power drive, right? And you could add two of the weights to the top of the machine just to make it more aggressive. You could also add steel plates. And this is going to depend, too, on species of wood that you're working on. And this is just something that as you guys work with the machine, as you work with the different abrasives, you're going to see with your system what kind of works best. But we can kind of outline that for you here and then you're going to have to adapt it to your actual style of sanding floors. But if I'm sanding with, you know, uh, the power drive all the way through, I'm probably just going to use it as is because the pads on this have just a little bit of cushion, and those are going to be enough to help it dig into the floor, or grab onto the floor in the finish and sand it um, without being too aggressive and leaving dig marks. Now you may find on some species, and it might be harder species, Brazilian cherry, um, maple, something like that, that you might actually want to put the steel discs. If you do, we'd also recommend using the intermediate pad. So you go intermediate pad, steel disc, and then I'm going to put my abrasive directly on top of that. I'd also suggest if you do that, just leave the intermediate pad and the steel disc together as a set. Because this is, the intermediate pad is going to be what you destroy after a while, um, tearing it on and off uh, either the abrasives or off your drive plate um, or off the steel disc. So just leave those as a set and they'll last you a long time. Um, so again, I would go intermediate pad, steel disc, green, uh, probably 40 or 50 grit. That's going to be my first cut. And again, do I add one weight? Do I add two weights? You're going to have to kind of measure that, see how it's going, and, and make your decision there. So that's my rough cut. Then I'm going to move into my medium cut. I'm still going to use power drive, uh, but now I'm going to use Bona Blue. So I'm going to go to 60 or 80 grit. Now some guys, let's say if I go 50 grit green, I might go 60 grit blue when I'm switching from one type of machine to the other uh, if I do 50 grit on my big sander. And then I might go 60 grit blue. I might not jump all the way up to 80 grit. But again, that's going to depend on your experience, the species you're working on, and you judging those scratch patterns and how everything is transitioning from one abrasive and one machine to the other. But I'm doing my heavy cut. Then I'm doing my medium cut with Bona Blue, 60 or 80 grit. Then I'm going to move to my fine cut. Now this would be for a natural floor, so no stain, no oil, natural floor, straight sealer and finish. I'm still going to use my power drive. Again, I may uh, add steel discs there because I really want to refine that scratch and minimize it, which the steel discs will actually do with the intermediate pads. And then I'm going 80, 100, or 120 grit black. 
Again, depending on what species, what I want that final scratch pattern to be like. So that's natural floor. Um, if I do a stained or oiled floor, we're going to change that up a little bit. So my heavy cut's going to stay the same, right? Still starting out with Bona Green, big sander and or uh, power drive. Still going to Bona Blue next, remaining with the, the power drive. And then I'm probably going to do my, me or my fine cut again with the power drive. But because now I'm putting stain or oil on it, now for my very last cut, I'm going to switch to multi-disc. Now, and one thing is the speed of which these things turn. So your regular buffer or the, the hub in here spins at 175 RPMs, right? Uh, so that's going to give me my, my least aggressive cut. If I go to the power drive, each of these discs spins at about 800 to 900 RPMs. So a lot more power, uh, but a little smaller disc, obviously, than, uh, than your main um, flat drive plate. But then the, the multi-disc, these spin at two and a half times, the 175, or about 440 RPMs. So if I'm doing a natural floor, an oiled floor, where I really want to minimize that scratch, why I want to go here is, one, it's got a smaller disc, it's spinning slower than my power drive, and these are also free spinning. At this point, I've got the floor perfectly flat, right? So I don't have to worry about these catching, um, dragging, because they are free spinning. They're not totally driven like the, the power drive. Um, so that'll minimize my scratch using the multi-disc as my final cut. And all of these plates can also be used on the power drive. The other thing with the multi-disc, right, is we also have that choice then of steel plates and intermediate pads. So I'm probably going to do the same thing. If I'm really trying to minimize that scratch, I'm going to go intermediate pad down first. I'm going to go steel plate on top of that. And then I'm going again bone of black or even bone of diamond 80 to 120 grit. If we're dealing with raw wood, I really like the diamonds. Again, whether it's 80 or 120 because you get such a, a smooth uh, scratch pattern to it and fine scratch pattern where if you're putting color on the floor, it really tends to take a lot more evenly than it gets when uh, I use traditional abrasives. But either way, uh, bone of black, bone of diamond, uh, 80 to 120 grit for that final cut on the multi-disc will do a great job. All right, so we're going to go ahead now and cut the filler off, but we're going to use power drive, and we're just going to use, what do we got here, 80 grit, 80 grit bone of blue. Again, traditionally, guys would cut their filler off with a big machine, right? But uh, our goal of the filler and putting filler on is to leave the filler in the floor. Your big machine vibrates so much, and just the way that it, it cuts and pulls, it tends to pull a lot of that filler out of the floor. If we use a flat system to get our filler out, then it's going to tend to leave all that filler in, not, not only in the soft grain, but down in all our seams and our end joints. So much better idea to take your excess filler off with power drive and bone of blue than with the big machine. All right, so let's get to it. So right now I'll be demonstrating how close the power drive can get to the wall. So along this wall, what we would tend to call the runner wall, I'll just run the machine 
you know, having the cut point right up against the wall, or I should say the right side of the, of the power drive, and you'll just walk down your butt end walls. Once you get to your, I'm sorry, this is your runner wall. Once you get to the butt end wall, what you're going to want to do, there's a couple different techniques. If you drag the power drive all the way across your butt ends, what could happen is that you can end up burnishing the floor and therefore you'll have what we call picture framing. So you want to minimize that. So there's a couple different ways. Some guys will just kind of run the power drive like an edger using a rotation, um, you know, kind of bumping the wall using a rotation or they'll drag it maybe two or three feet, but then they'll come back in and feather everything in with the power drive. So there's a couple different techniques, but the main takeaway is how close we're gonna be able to get to the wall, which is gonna minimize your edging time. Two things we wanted to show is if you have quarter round up on the wall, how close you can get to the quarter round. But if you don't have quarter round up on the wall, you may even be able, you get close enough to where you know the quarter round is going to cover most of that, and which leaves you very little to etch. So two other techniques we just showed was having the drive, um, having the power drive right up against the wall and kind of lifting up on it a little bit so that you can get a closer cut along your butt ends as well as putting a little bit of pressure on with your feet, which will allow you to get a lot closer and minimize how much edging you have to do.
All right, so now we're going to talk about uh, wire brushing and how does that work with the power drive. So the wire brush kit, we'll go over what you get with that, but first, um, you know, preface this with we've already sanded this floor with our coarse grit, our, fine, our medium grit, and fine grit up to 80 or 100. So we've gone through that whole process. Now we're ready to take the, uh, the soft grain out. So in the wire brush kit, you'll get um, one of the wire brushes that's set to go in a regular angle grinder. Uh, there is a certain one that we recommend, but really any standard angle grinder will, uh, will fit this and then a dust skirt to go over the top of that. Because we're going to use that and water along the edges first. So we're going to spray water, we'll take that angle grinder and we'll go around our edges to remove that soft grain around the outside. You've also got then um, your corners and stuff, so several methods you can use there. You can use the, the brush, a wire brush that comes in the kit to take those out, still spraying those corners, and also your, your butt ends of your boards. What I'd recommend though is get a Dremel tool and or a power drill and some of these uh, wire cups, right? Um, you can get you know a fine to medium uh, one as far as the coarseness, but those will do a nice job if you spray water in the corner on the butt ends near the wall and then run this wire cup there to take that amount out that you need to blend in with the rest of the floor. All right, so we're always using water too when we're using the wire brushes because it helps to keep them cooler. Uh, also, another key item that you get in uh, your wire brush kit is these gloves. Definitely want to use them. Uh, these little wires are very pointy, very sharp, and they'll definitely draw blood a lot if you don't use the gloves. Uh, weights. So a lot of times when we're taking out the soft grain, we want a little extra weight on there, but only use one of the weights. If you use two weights, uh, you'll tend to damage your brushes. It makes them splay out a little too much, puts pressure on them. So only one weight, if any, that you want to use on there. Also make sure that you have a good pair of safety glasses, all right? Regular glasses, uh, if the, the lenses on them are too small, might not protect enough. Again, we've got little metal pieces on here that can also tend to break off a little bit, come flying out of the machine, even though we'll have a brush skirt on. Safety first, so uh, get a good pair of safety glasses to wear while you're doing this operation. So pretty easy though, we're gonna simply stick, you got Velcro mount on the back of the brushes, we're gonna stick them directly on the uh, Velcro hook side on the power drive. Now to get those off, you also get one of these fancy five-in-one paint tools that comes in your kit. But to get them off, you're going to insert this uh, to help separate that Velcro action, right? You will not be able to physically pull these off the machine. So uh, don't lose this tool because it'll help you get those off while you're going. All right, the other thing that you'll see that, that Bobby's going to show, now we pre-water pop this floor as well. You don't have to. I like to because it just makes sense to me that if I'm trying to take the soft grain out, I want to soften it up first. So when I water pop it, let it dry, it's helping that soft grain, I like to call it blooming, right? It's, it's raising it, kind of like putting uh, water on a soft sponge, raising it up, softening those fibers, putting more space between them. So water pop it first, let it dry, but we're still going to spray water on it while we're going. One, it helps kind of re-soften and help, makes it easier to pull that grain out. Uh, plus, again, it helps your wires uh, in your brushes run a lot cooler, all right? So you'll see Bobby doing that, spraying with water as we're going to help uh, in both those processes. So wire brush is going to be standard. Your speed, making even runs, overlapping the way you're supposed to, right? It's just like buffing a fine floor in that we want to make sure we're doing everything evenly because we don't want to take a, a ton of soft grain out here and hardly any over here depending on floor to ceiling windows, everything else that may show up. So we still want to make sure we're doing a nice, even, smooth job while we're going to, to take that grain out in an even manner. Now the Tynex brushes, um, these are non-metal. Um, they do not come in the kit. I'd recommend you get some though, and they're great for a couple reasons. One, if I'm working on a softer species like yellow pine, fir, even uh, uh, walnut, right? Pretty soft uh, in general. Um, wire brushes may be too aggressive. They might be leaving too many scratches in them. So the Tynex brushes come in really nice for that. The other thing that we may want to do if we're wire brushing and then putting a penetrating oil on the floor, the wire brushes at the bottom of that grain really tend to dig it out and make it kind of rough. 
uh, and that's going to kind of show up in your penetrating oil. So after we run the wire brushes on a floor like that, we're going to run the Tynex brushes on there just to really smooth out the, the bottom portion and, and the sides and stuff of that grain that we just pulled out. So once we're done with that, then we're going to take multi-disc, do our final sanding. Now we want to use multi-disc. I like the 120 diamonds. And then also with the uh, steel plates and intermediate pads here. Right, because I've dished it out. I've created this other layer in this, this 3D image. And I don't want to blend that together. Uh, I really want to refine that and make it even sharper. So I want to put something on the floor that is really, really flat. That's only going to go back over that hard grain, take out any of the remaining scratches on top of there, finish my floor up really nice, and then it'll be ready for oil stain sealer. Uh, then one last thing is Tampico brush, right? This can also be run on my power drive. So we're going to take this, and it's going to get down in that grain that we just scooped out. It's going to clean all that really fine dust and stuff out of there completely. So we've got a really super clean floor to go ahead and put our oil stain sealer and finish on top of. One other item, the last item you get uh, with your brush kit is an extra ring. It's an extra deep brush ring, right? Here's our standard one. Here's the one that comes in the brush kit. It's because the brushes extend down past the, the bottom of this a little further, so we want to make sure we're still maintaining good dust control while we're using this system. Okay, so that's the wire brush kit, how you use it with the power drive. Now Bobby's going to come on and go ahead and go through the whole process for us. We'll come back after that to wrap this up.
Hey, welcome back everyone. We're getting ready to wrap up this session on the power drive. First, we want to throw a question out to Bob though on, you know, you mentioned three things, uh, parts that you guys tend to service more on the, the power drive for guys and different things they could do to really uh, minimize that. So what would that, what, what would those be? Yeah, great parts that you uh, may want to keep in your truck would probably be like start with your pads. Uh, keep those, I mean, on a job site, you may catch an air vent or a shaker board. So uh, keeping a few pads in your truck would probably be a good idea. Um, and if you're going to change out your pads, it'd probably be a good idea to change all four of them out and then keep your, the, uh, the others, your spares and extras. And that way you have all fresh new pads. Um, another good uh, tip would be that if you're uh, uh, wheeling your, your power drive in and out of a job site, uh, remove your weights from that, and, and that'd be less likely to, uh, to break your wheels. Um, so that would be a, a good idea. Um, How about drive plate, not storing it with the drive plate on there? Yeah, we have seen those, yeah, breaking the pads off. So really when you store your, uh, your, your driver inside your, your vehicle, make sure you remove that uh, between transportation or, or moving between job sites. Yeah. D, how about, uh, again, from the schools and stuff or your personal experience, what do you think the biggest advantage to the power drive is? Um, the learning curve is probably the biggest advantage uh, for new guys, um, you know, sanding the floor, but also um, just minimizing how much edging you have to do. And I, I feel that this machine gets the floor flatter than any other machine. So I would say those three things. Yeah, and I think we'd all agree, I mean, just the flexibility of this machine, even compared to a lot of the other copycat machines out there. I mean, to be able to run this as the power drive, put the multi-disc on there, put a 10 pico brush, run the 16 inch drive plate on there, wire brush kit. You can just run it so many ways and do so many things with it that, uh, I mean, it's a great tool to have in your arsenal. I know one of the things I was most impressed with, well, two things, one is running it at my own house on, you know, border work and stuff that had multiple species, especially I had maple, Brazilian cherry, and American cherry, so two really hard species and a really soft species sandwiched in between and power drive kept it dead flat. And then what it does to, to something like this, I mean, you take these 12 inch planks and they're just beautiful to begin with, but then you run that wire brush system over this and how it makes those pop out so much more, I mean, really almost makes it a, a, a work of art um, versus just wood flooring. So uh, again, power drive's a great tool for you guys. We think everybody should have one, uh, easy learning curve, so many different ways you can use it. Um, so come back and watch this webinar on uh, the Bona Professional uh, channel on YouTube and the other online training videos that we have on there as well. Also tune in to uh, the podcast, On the Floor with Wayne and Rob, a lot of good information on that podcast. And if you have any technical questions, you can always email those in to ustech at bona.com or you can always give us a call from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. Mountain Standard Time at one 800 8725515 All right, that's it. Thanks for watching everyone. Appreciate it and we'll see you at the next webinar.